Morning, Hiroshima, Japan. Today is a special day. This old woman is making her weary way to see her son. He disappeared the morning the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. He was a middle school student. Since then, on the sixth of every month for 45 years, she has been offering prayers for him. Her prayers are one with those of other Hiroshima mothers who experienced the city's nuclear nightmare. In Hiroshima before the war, Children played, as carefree as children everywhere. When these children entered middle school, Japan was already involved in a major war. On that morning, August 6th, 1945, some were at school, others were demolishing houses to make fire breaks. The all clear had sounded, so no one was in the bomb shelters. The moment... Time stopped. It was 8.15 in the morning. What happened? Some refugees finally reached Miyuki Bridge. The students working on the fire breaks were killed instantly. A blinding flash and Hiroshima was ashes. A month later, a physical and chemical institute survey team entered the burn city to gather data on the impact of the atomic bombing. This is what their camera saw. Hiroshima had turned into a huge cemetery for over 100,000 corpses. Hiroshima was dead. No grass, no houses, and no children laughing. thousand people lived there at the time. Ioi Bridge, the bomb's target. Five hundred eighty meters above the Shima Hospital, the explosion generated a huge fireball with a temperature of several million degrees Celsius. Ground temperatures rose to three thousand degrees Celsius. Radiation far beyond lethal levels penetrated everything. Could this be our Hiroshima? That day, people wandered around like ghosts. Wounded mothers carried their dead babies. A shadow, 
the last step of a man who was vaporized on the bridge. The rivers were choked with thousands of dead bodies. Some narrowly escaped death. Time stopped forever for this clock shop. The headquarters of the Hiroshima Gas Company, where no one survived. It seemed we could hear their screams from the ruins. Burned people staggered among the ruins seeking water. Girl students piled one on top of another in the water tank. No one can forget these horrifying scenes. Black rain stained the remaining eaves. City administration stopped completely. Still, people returned to the city. Barely alive. Everything gone. Wounded and sick, seeking help in the hospitals among the ruins. Most hospitals were reduced to rubble. Schools became emergency aid stations for the injured. Straw mats became window panes. There were no beds. The injured slept on the concrete floors. Mothers searched the aid stations for their missing children. This child's feet were burned fleeing along the burning asphalt road. Tiny fingers seemed to melt. At the Ujina Army Hospital, soldiers still saluted at the entrance. Burns did not heal and began to change into grotesque keloid scars. The A-bomb flash burned this soldier's eyes. Girls who lost their hair were accommodated in the Red Cross Hospital some doctors and nurses were suffering as well. Medical equipment was broken down. There were no ointments. Vegetable oil and machine oil had to do for burns. In the summer heat, the injured were tormented by maggots breeding in their wounds. Worried about hair loss, people came for blood tests which showed white cell abnormalities. But what did it mean? A glass shard wound. Hair loss, bleeding gums, fever and diarrhea are symptoms of ABOM disease. This brother and sister have no visible wounds, but the bomb has taken their lives just the same. The Hiroshima Communications Hospital narrowly escaped destruction. 
Within two months after the attack, 210,000 outpatients alone reportedly were treated in Hiroshima hospitals. In the ophthalmological unit, treatment was given to this woman who lost her eye to a piece of flying glass. Even if they were healed, people had no homes to return to as winter approached. Many of the children, like this boy, were orphans. To study the effects of the atomic bomb on the internal organs of the victims, autopsies were performed in a temporary shed built on the hospital grounds. Bodies of many A-bomb victims were brought to the grounds of the Koi Elementary School. Many others were brought here alive, but they too soon died. The Oshiba Elementary School. Many of the doctors treating the victims of the blast were themselves victims of A-bomb disease and later died. Food was scarce. Small quantities of soybeans were boiled as food for children. Some mothers died taking care of their wounded children. Even two months after the atomic blast, the spectre of slow death was approaching. It was not a burn or a blast injury, but radiation. What could it do to the human body? A trembling, fragile life. This four-year-old girl cried in a barely audible whisper, Mother, Mother. Spring came even to Hiroshima, where, it was said, grass would never grow again. Barracks were built for the A-bomb victims as a temporary measure. Every family had members missing. The city of Hiroshima lay in ruins, and in Tokyo, the International Military Tribunal sat in judgment on Japan's war. There would have been no atomic bomb if there had been no war. On the 6th of August, two years later, the Hiroshima Peace Restoration Festival was held for the first time. Japan was still under the occupation. This was the day the people of the city reflected on war and the horrors it had visited upon their lives. This is the memorial mound built near Ground Zero. The mother's grief by this time had become a collective prayer for peace. But the bomb's grisly after effects were not over. One day, over the Christmas season of the third year, a five-year-old boy exposed to radiation was brought to Dr. Tomin Harada, a surgeon. His temperature had soared to over 40 degrees Celsius. He was weak and had sores that would not heal. <laughs> So, 
赤血球も白血球も見つからないんです本当はねでしばらく見てると赤血球の壊れた残骸がありでわずかな数の白血球普通の10倍もあるような大きな、まあ、悪魔的な白血球が見えたわけですそれが白血病の、まあ、ある一種の一番恐ろしい方の一つだったわけですね。ケンジ君は3日後に何の何,何,何すべもなく死んでしまいましたですがそれから数年間34年の間が白血病を多発という恐ろしい時代に突入してたわけだと思います「August 6th, 1952, the seventh year. The memorial cenotaph was unveiled by children orphaned by the bomb. It was Hiroshima's way of appealing to the world to stop the use of nuclear weapons and to work for peace. The United States and the Soviet Union had begun to develop hydrogen bombs. November 1952, Enuitak Atoll in the Marshall Islands. The world entered a new stage in the endless race to develop nuclear weapons. March 1954. The Fukuryu Maru No. 5, a Japanese fishing boat, was in the vicinity of the H bomb test conducted by the United States off Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands. Radioactive matter, ashes of death, rained down on the fishermen. They began to show the same symptoms as the people of Hiroshima. Aikichi Kuboyama, chief radio operator. He died six months after he was exposed to the ashes of death. His death and the grief of his young wife and family touched thousands. Movements against nuclear weapons expanded rapidly in Japan. His young daughter fanned her father's ashes in the urn, hoping to cool him. The next year, a decade after the A bomb attack, his widow visited Hiroshima. For her, Bikini Atoll and Hiroshima were closely linked. In 1955, the first World Conference against atomic and hydrogen bombs was held in Hiroshima. Regardless of their individual positions and nationalities, many people made a pilgrimage to Hiroshima and Nagasaki in support of peace. Mrs. Kuboyama and the atomic bomb victims who participated in the conference appealed to the world for no more Hiroshimas and Nagasakis. But the atomic bomb had been quietly destroying the health of children who appeared to be healthy. One of the girls suffering from leukemia folded over a thousand paper cranes from her medicine wrappers, believing she would be cured if she did so. But she died, leaving the record she had made of her weekly blood tests. At the age of two, she became a victim of the A bomb. Ten years later, she died. Her classmates, together with the students of many other schools, began a fundraising campaign for the erection of a statue to share her hope with the world. Her strings of cranes were her legacy of peace to the world. But nuclear testing continued to increase. 
the victims of the A-bomb protested, repeatedly reminding the world that they could never tolerate the existence of nuclear weapons. Twenty years passed. This girl's mother was pregnant at the time of the atomic bombing. She is mentally retarded and at 20 acts like a small child. Every morning before leaving for work, her mother prepares two meals and leaves medicine and 20 yen for her daughter. The girl eats lunch alone. Radiation damaged her life within a few months of conception. But she will never understand this. This is the burden borne by an innocent mother and child. For them, the tragedy of the atomic bomb which was dropped on Hiroshima has continued through the years. Through the huge volume of records of the A-bomb victims, new names are continually being found. At last their ashes, kept by the municipal government, can be returned home. The grief and sorrow spans time. There is no cure for the atom bomb. Twenty-five years passed. What happened to those people in the films? Dr. Fumio Shigeto, deputy director of the Red Cross Hospital in Hiroshima, cared for many of the victims. The mother of these children, Mrs. Ikemoto, boiled medicinal herbs for them to drink, hoping it would cure them. It did not work. Their mother was left alone. This man, Mr. Sasaki, survived. How he lived after such injuries is a miracle. For him, every day has been a struggle to live with the atomic bomb.
Mrs. Matsusta lost an eye to the atomic flash. She will never forget what she saw. Sankichi Toge, an A bomb victim, wrote this poem Give back my father, give back my mother, give back the children. Now is the time to marshal our efforts to ensure that these weapons, capable of destroying the world dozens of times over, are abolished. On February 25th, 1981, Pope John Paul II knelt before the Cenotaph and issued an appeal for peace, saying that to remember Hiroshima is to abhor nuclear war. Hiroshima and Nagasaki, stand out from all those other places and monuments as the first victims of nuclear war. 1987 saw the first tangible step toward the abolition of nuclear weapons. The World Conference of Mayors for Peace through Intercity Solidarity, held in Hiroshima, sent a strong signal of support. Hiroshima became the place of pilgrimage for this goal. A group of junior high school students visited the city. They were the same age as the students killed in the vicinity of Ground Zero. Their representative made an emotional appeal. <laughs> Hiroshima's dead can only be redeemed when people's firm determination to achieve peace is conveyed to the next generation like a son living in the heart of his old mother. What happened that day must be remembered by us all and used as a foundation stone for peace. That is the eternal prayer of Hiroshima, motherland of peace, that a world without nuclear weapons 
be secured.